After five weeks of games, some BCS favorites have emerged. Our exclusive campus crawl goes to L.A. and Austin in search of upsets. For a second week, the SEC treats us to a top 10 showdown. Georgia looked terrific in Tempe. Now Bama aims to derail the dogs. The Big Ten has a marquee matchup of its own. Will the Nittany Lions keep their dark horse BCS dreams alive with the Illini coming to town? College football starts right now. The SEC enters week five of the season with five teams in the top 15. We kick off our week by looking at their biggest games, the opening weekend in Big Ten conference play, and the intra-conference matchups coming up between the Big 12 and the ACC. But first, a look at the Tuesday headlines. And finally, we have good news coming from Columbus. Ohio State's backfield is back to full strength. Chris Beanie Wells is expected to play in the Buckeyes conference opener against Minnesota. He has missed the last three games with a foot injury. And while Wells is leaving the sideline, another Big Ten icon hopes to make a return to it. Joe Paterno plans the coach on the field after a sore leg forced him to the press box in last week's victory over Temple. The 12th ranked Nittany Lions welcome number 22 Illinois to Beaver Stadium on Saturday. Notre Dame head coach Charlie Weiss is allowing tight end Will Yateman to practice but not play in games until an alcohol-related investigation by authorities is concluded. And South Carolina's starting left tackle Jarrell King was taken to the hospital Tuesday morning after experiencing a heart flutter. He'll likely miss one day of practice. The top-ranked and well-rested USC Trojans are back in action Thursday night at Oregon State with a primetime chance to move to 3-0 and avenge that 2006 loss in Corvallis. Ryan Abraham of USC Football and Rivals.com joins us. You have been to practice. You were also practiced prior to the big Ohio State game. Any difference in the feel of practice? It's pretty similar, actually, Paul. The, the one thing that's going on here, they've had a strange start to the season with the bye weeks and then a Thursday night game here coming up against Oregon State. So they've had a little bit different schedule. They get out of their routine a little bit, but I think the focus has really been on their, um, themselves, try to get themselves ready. So I think they tried to get themselves ready for Ohio State. That worked out pretty well with the big win. They're doing the same thing with Oregon State. I mentioned the 2006 upset loss at Oregon State. A lot of the players going to be playing in this game were also on the field two years ago. Any revenge factor among the players? You know, I think the players aren't really talking about a revenge factor, but it's got to be in the back of their minds. And I know they left a bunch on the table the last couple years. That Oregon State loss really, you know, kept them from getting into the national championship game that year. So Oregon State's not a great program right now. They're only one and two. I think most of the guys are focused on trying to get out there, execute their offense, and put up a lot of points and beat the Beavers. Now, USC is the only Pac-10 team rated in the top 25. They're going to be heavily favored in every single game they play from here on out. Preventing uninspired efforts has to be a theme at practice. Yeah, they don't want to have that letdown that they've had in years past. Those are the kind of games that knock them out. And I think there's a couple reasons why that's not going to happen. One is because of the schedule we talked about. They had the extra time to prepare. So you have that bye week. You get the extra practices, and I think people focus on that singular opponent instead of having a short week of practices to get ready. The other one is, is Mark Sanchez, the quarterback. Just his leadership skills alone, I think everyone kind of rallies around him. He's just not going to let those guys have a letdown and play badly against a worse opponent. All right, Ryan, thank you. Well, the Texas Longhorns and their quarterback, Colt McCoy, have been flying under the radar just a bit. Even though the team is ranked seventh and their offense is sixth, they might be the best team that nobody's talking about. Their next opponent is Arkansas. Our next guest is Sean Adams of Orange Bloods and Rivals.com. Let's start with the loss of tight end Blaine Irby. How much will that be felt? Well, I think it's going to be felt a lot, and I'll tell you why. Uh, the tight end spot has been uh, a historical spot of success for them with Jermichael Finley, David Thomas, Bo Skay, uh, all three of those guys in the NFL right now. And Blaine Irby was a guy who could stretch the field, run down the seam, make things happen. They don't have another guy in that mode behind him, so they've got to make a decision on whether they're going to um, try to use two tight ends and move to an I formation or if they're just going to spread it out and see if they can throw without using a tight end. Longhorns, uh, as far as their running backs go, they, they've been moving the ball, they've been scoring points, but not a lot of production from the running backs. What's, what's going on there? Well, that's the question that everybody's talking about in Austin, and we talked about it with Mac Brown yesterday at the press conference. Uh, the running backs actually have low numbers per carry, around three yards a carry, but the team as a whole, with Colt McCoy included at quarterback, is running for about 200 yards a game or a little more than that. 
But everybody gets a little scared when you don't have that production. Historically, the running quarterbacks do really well when you have that complement at the running back spot. And against the opponent so far, it's worked. But they're wondering, as the schedule mounts and gets better and better, they're wondering if that running game is still going to be able to put up the yardage. As far as the passing game, Colt McCoy has been outstanding. Number three in the nation in passing efficiency. Was very good his freshman year, okay his sophomore year. Is he better than ever right now? Well, I th everybody looking at him has got to think he's better than ever because he's playing so relaxed. And some of the plays that he made look hard last year to accomplish, he's making look very easy right now. One of the things I think that everybody can look at is his ability to check down. Major Applewhite coming over, being a running back coach, being a former quarterback at Texas, he's encouraged him and worked with him to check down. And now he's throwing a lot to the running backs. He's checking down to his second and third options and not forcing throws and not making bad decisions based on trying to make big plays. Most of the national quarterback attention in the Big 12 has gone to Chase Daniel, to Graham Harrell, to Sam Bradford. Is Colt the kind of kid that is motivated by that? Well, I think he's motivated, motivated by that, but I also think that he understands that this Texas team is only going to go as far as he can take them. And as long as he's out there looking for um, kind of selfish glory, if you will, uh, they're not going to do very well. So Colt McCoy is supremely uh, focused on this team and their effort as an offense to make things better for them so that they can you know do some things that might help that young defense as they mature over time so I don't think he's looking a lot at the individual production right now Sean good stuff thank you very much on Monday Ball State head coach Brady Hoke delivered encouraging news on injured wide receiver Dante Love Love who entered the game as the nation's leading receiver in yards per game suffered a broken spine and a spinal cord injury in the second quarter of that Cardinals win over Indiana he was airlifted to Bloomington Hospital where he underwent five hours of surgery now Love's football career is likely over but he is able to move his arms and legs and is expected to quote live a happy and normal life for more on Dante Love and the undefeated Ball State Cardinals we welcome Andy Thorpe of Ball State Insider and Scout.com. Now, this is an emotional as well as on the field hit. Dante Love, a tremendous player, very well liked. Absolutely. How do they move on without him? Well, obviously, like you said, he, he brings a lot to the table. He's a playmaker, he's a receiver. He lined up as a quarterback, uh, threw some passes over his career, and uh, also as a running back, running the ball quite a bit. Uh, not one guy alone is going to take, take up the slack for him. I mean, you're going to look at Darius Hill, a tight end who's, who's big and mobile and, and can create matchup problems as well as uh, some of the younger wide receivers of Briggs Orsbond, a true freshman who's already caught two touchdown passes this season. A lot of kids will have to step up in, in, his, in his place. Now it looks like Ball State is the real deal. 4-0, they handled Indiana last week. So I want to use this session for us and for the nation as kind of a get to know this team. Let's start with your quarterback, mm -hmm. Nate Davis. Well, Nate Davis, uh, the glove as he's known as around these parts, uh, he's just an amazing athlete, uh, great quarterback. He's not a runner. Uh, what he is is a, is a guy with a great arm. He can make all the throws. Uh, he's fifth in the nation in uh, pass efficiency. Um, he has the ability to get away, escape from a rush and, and, and shut off the tacklers and, and make the throw downfield. Uh, he's just an amazing young athlete. 73%, 10 touchdowns, three interceptions, very yes. impressive. How about the Absolutely. running back, Mike Whale Lewis? Uh, Mikhail Lewis, he's a little bowling ball type guy. He's five foot six, 184 pounds. Uh, he's a big question mark coming into the season. Uh, he tore an ACL last year uh, against Nebraska, and that really hurt the offense uh, last year. Uh, but this year, he's come right in. He's averaging over 140 yards a game, uh, also fourth in the nation uh, in that category. And he's just been superb, and, and that's really led to a dual, dual threat capability for our offense. The yeah, last two games, 57 carries for 320 yards. And the head coach, Brady Hoke, he's an alum, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Former player. Uh, he was on the 78 uh, MAC championship team, uh, former captain of the team. So uh, he, he, come, he came to us from Michigan, um, where he won a national championship with the Wolverines, um, as well as our offensive coordinator, Stan Parrish, who also was a, a assistant on that team. And um, it's great to have him back. He's, he's rebuilt the program and uh, restored a lot of faith in the alumni. Thanks to Andy, Sean, and Ryan. And remember to log on to Rivals.com and Scout.com to find out the latest on your team. You won't find a bigger game this weekend than the one that will take place between the hedges. Who has the advantage?